of them, they are her special brownies. That does not mean they contain any illicit ingredients. It simply means that they use, it uses Splenda rather than flour. Now, what you don't know at this point is this is my fourth attempt at filming this. Um, my camera was giving me problems. So, unfortunately, I've already put two of the ingredients in the bowl and started to blend them together, but I'll cover that in a second. First, I want to remind you that if you have not entered my 500 supporter gift giveaway, uh, I encourage you to do so. Just go to the video prior to this one, and uh, or not 500, it's 250. I'm getting ahead of myself by a few hundred supporters. Yes, 250 supporter gift giveaway. Um, I encourage you, check it out. Uh, get your name into the draw. I will be drawing for the gift next Tuesday. Not sure what we'll be baking, but I will be drawing uh, the name of the winner of the dash cam and a couple of other mystery items next Tuesday, the 3rd of July. So, for you who are in Canada, I probably won't see you before, well, might see you Friday for the groaner and shout out of the week, but uh, wish you a happy Canada Day. And in case you're watching from the U.S., a happy Independence Day for July 4th. If you're in England, just have a great day. Anywhere else, same thing. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's get to making brownies. Now, I've already put in the bowl two-thirds of a cup of white all-purpose flour and two-thirds of a cup of Splenda. Now, if you prefer and don't want to use Splenda, you can use regular white granulated sugar. So it's two-thirds of a cup of flour, two-thirds of a cup Splenda or granulated sugar. And you want to mix those well together. If you don't have a whisk, go to your dollar store and buy one. They're not expensive. Um, you can buy really expensive ones, but uh, I don't know what I'd do without a whisk. So really encourage it. It really blends the ingredients together well. So first we're going to blend our dry ingredients. So we have two-thirds of a cup of flour, two-thirds of a cup of Splenda. The next ingredient is a third of a cup of cocoa. I use fries, but you use whatever brand is available to you. It's just a cocoa powder. It's not hot chocolate powder. I'm not sure how that would work if you use that, but just plain old fries cocoa. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm picky. I try to get everything out. As Oblix Magnet Fishing from uh, Holland would say, or said to me, I remind him as, of his father who uh, never left anything on his plate and would go over his plate repeatedly to make sure he hadn't missed anything. But uh, I was raised in a family with parents that. Uh, lived in England during World War II. My dad was actually in the RAF and out of England most of World War II. But uh, things were rationed and of course there was also the bit of a depression there as well before the war. So you don't waste anything. I've got a few lumps in my cocoa here I want to try and mush out if I can. Good. So we'll get that blended together. Then we're going to add a teaspoon of baking powder. One teaspoon baking powder. And a half teaspoon baking soda. A quarter teaspoon of salt. And whisk that all in together. So that's one teaspoon baking powder, half a teaspoon baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now people always wonder if baking soda and salt are the same thing. Well, no. Um, table salt is uh, sodium chloride, I believe, or something along those lines. And baking uh, soda is a salt, but it's not the same as table salt. Uh, the reason you put baking soda in and baking powder is it helps non-yeast things to rise. Um, if you're 
making bread or something, you have yeast in there, which makes it rise, so you don't need to put baking powder or baking soda. But that's what it does. Whereas table salt, if you put in table salt, salt it wouldn't cause the brownies to rise. So that's what that is. So now we'll set that to the side. And in a separate bowl, we are going to blend together two eggs. If I can get them to crack. Yes, that hen must have had her calcium that day. Good hard eggshell. And no, I'm not one of those fancy chefs that does the one-handed egg cracking. That's not something I've ever been very good at. So. Rather than make a mess, I'll just do it this way. I'll tell you when I beat those eggs up real well. Then we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. These are, of course, your wet ingredients. Now, if you want to do this in a mix master, you can. Uh, as you know from watching my show, I tend to do things by hand. Keep those well blended together. And then next, I've already pre-melted it. But you want a third of a cup of melted butter, or if you prefer margarine, will work as well. I, use, I, I tend to use butter more than margarine. Um, there's a few things I use margarine for, but I just don't think you can beat the taste of real butter. Nothing against you that produce margarine. It's a good product, but... Uh, there we go, so that side. We want to blend that in really well. So look at that all mixed up. Any product that has oil in it is always a little harder to get blended. Um, as you know, oil and vinegar, oil and water tend to want to separate. So just make sure you give them a good, good beating there. Think of that person that really has you angry or upset. If you just want to get even with them, take out your aggression on your, on your wet ingredients. Like I say, if you prefer, you can use a blender to mix this together. Now the next ingredient is applesauce, unsweetened applesauce. I buy uh, the tubs like this. It's uh, a third of a cup of applesauce. And I just find it's easier to buy it this way than in a, a big jar or can because like, this is best before May 2019. And I believe I bought this in May of this year. So you, they're good for a year and basically it's pre-measured. So don't have to worry about scooping it out of a jar into a into a measuring cup. I think these are a tiny bit more than a third of a cup. Um, I seem to remember measuring it, but I found it didn't make any difference in the brownies, so it, uh, they, all, they still came out just as good. So anyway, if you want to do it, if you have already have applesauce and, and, or you can't get these little things, it's a, a third of a cup of applesauce. Mmm, I have to clean it out and eat the rest later. And we just kind of blend that together. Get it all whisked up. Now I'll bring this back over, move these things out of our way. away here and use my fork. Now, I want to pour that in there. Now, if you're using the mix mask, you're going to do this the reverse of how I'm doing it. You're going to run the wet ingredients in the mix master and slowly add to that your dry ingredients. Um, I find it easier this way because I'm not using a mix master. So I'll just repeat that in case you didn't catch it or if you're confused. If you are blending your wet ingredients in a mix master, then add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients in the mix master. If you're doing it by hand like I am, I find it easier to add the wet ingredients to the dry. 
And then we want to get that all blended together. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, it's actually a fairly simple recipe. I'll, uh, I'll put the ingredients down below if you watch at the bottom of the screen as I'm putting them in, I'll, I'll include them. Um, if not, uh, I'll also put the full recipe at the end. You know, I'll leave my email address at the end like I always do, and you can email me for a copy of the recipe. And while you're at it, if you haven't entered the gift giveaway, you could uh, email, ask for the recipe and uh, answer the two questions to have your name put in the, in the gift giveaway draw. See, we're getting that batter nice and put together there. I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the recipe I have says to add walnuts, but I'm not a fan of walnuts. They're, they're okay, they're all right, but I prefer pecans. If you live in the southeastern U.S., Pecans are probably readily available to you. Remember when I lived in uh, Tennessee, there was never any problem getting pecans. It seemed like most of my neighbors had pecan trees in their yard. I, I didn't, but they all, they all did, so they were quite nice about offering us a bag of pecans occasionally. So anyway, we get that all blended in together, and there we go, you can see. Back that I did not put in the sink this time. I don't know if you remember the last video, I had stuck something in the, the fork that I was using in the sink, and so I had to get a clean fork out because I didn't want to risk contamination. As you all know by now, if you watch me on a regular basis, hygiene, cleanliness, and neatness in the kitchen are uh, something I'm very big on. Just for health and safety reasons. Always wash your hands before you start making anything. And if you have to stop and do anything while you're in the middle of making food, or if your hands get dirty, stop and wash them. It's just uh, better that way than having the people you're feeding get sick. Or yourself, for that matter. Alrighty. I'm gonna stop there. Mmm, that's good. Now, what you need next is a 8 by 8 greased uh, Pyrex dish or something. This is a, uh, a couple inches deep, I would say inch and a half, two inches deep. 8 by 8. You could probably do it in a 9 by 9, your brownies just will be a little thinner. And we always forget to do this with the camera here. Put our batter into the glass dish. Now again, this is a, another simple recipe. I always, I always chuckle when I hear people say, oh, I can't boil water without burning it. Well, you know, if you don't get over anxious and you take your time and read the recipe, follow the directions, and don't get sidetracked doing something else, really not that hard to make most things. Now, we're not talking gourmet cooking here. We're just talking simple baking. Do I make things that are more complex and harder? I do, but it would make for a very, very long video. One of the uh, cookies I like to make is cappuccino flats. And when I make those, I have to have my wife help because there's one part where you have to dip the cookies in molten chocolate and it's just a lot easier if you have extra help than just trying to do it all by yourself. So, and you can see I got chocolate on my apron, so I'll have to wash my apron afterwards. Shame on me. Anybody want to lick the bowl? You're, you're welcome. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll do it myself later. So,
There we go, we've got our batter into the, into the pan. Just kind of spread it out or you'll have one big lumpy brownie in the middle. Now when you're wa uh, greasing your pan, I, I just use butter or margarine, whichever, whichever I'm using to cook with, I'll use to grease my pan. And uh, always make sure you get the corners well, because that's usually where things are gonna stick when they come out of the, when you try and take them out of the pan, is the corners, especially if you're using a metal pan. I don't know why that is. I guess somehow when we grease, we just don't tend to get in there as well as we should. It's easy to grease the sides and the bottom, but the, the corners are a bit more difficult. So anyway, just try and spread that around somewhat evenly in the pan. along the edge. But, yeah, I am fussy, what can I say? You don't have to be this fussy, I'm just, I'm just a habitual fussy person. And, uh, mm, that is very good. Maybe I won't cook them, maybe I'll just eat them now. Uh, no, I'll cook them. All right, so they're ready to go. We'll put them in the oven at 350 degrees for I'm getting old and can't remember things for 15 minutes or until a probe comes out clean. So here we go into the oven. Let's turn the light on so you can see. That didn't do much good. I guess my light must be working. And there we are. We'll set the timer for 15 minutes. So it's going. So. Rather than make you sit here and watch for 15 minutes, I'll put you on pause. We'll be right back. Well, hello everyone, welcome back. As you can see on the timer, we're down to just a few seconds left before these are ready. I've got my handy dandy probe here. If you don't have one of these, uh, Michael's, I think I bought this one at Michael's Craft Store. They actually have a baking section. But there's other places you can buy them too. Uh, Williams, Williams Sonoma in, in the States is an excellent baking store, and cooking store. And just check these, see if they're done. And it pulls out just a little bit dirty. So we're going to give them a few more minutes. Give them two more minutes. So set the timer here for two. Wash the probe off. to uh, go through. But yeah, William Sonoma is a, a, a good cooking store. Stokes. Um, anyway, if you have a baking and cooking store in your area, just check and out. Tell them you're looking for a baking probe. If you don't want to spend the money, then toothpicks work quite well. But if you're doing a, a bundt cake or something fairly deep, a toothpick may not be long enough to reach into the center. So spend a few dollars, buy yourself a proper baking probe. Save yourself a lot of headaches. So we'll wait for that to finish. And while we're doing that, I just thought I would show you the gift giveaway. It's a dash cam. Um, you have to go to the video previous to this one where I tell you what you need to do to get your name on the list for the gift giveaway. Uh, I'm not sure the color of this one. I never opened it up to see, but we could do that real quick. It's not sealed for some reason. Let's just take a quick look and see. There we have it, it's black. So you can, you can see exactly what it looks like. I think it actually probably goes that way on your dash. Um, comes complete with everything to mount it and all the wires and uh, other paraphernalia. So a nice little dash cam. And uh, there'll be two other gifts that'll be included with it, but I'm not telling you what those are. You'll have to wait until you receive the package and see. So there you are. Be sure you check out my 250 uh, supporter giveaway video, which was the previous one to this one, and uh, that will be good. And we're only seven seconds left to go in that two minutes, but I went by fast enough. And we'll take our probe here, and let's just check and see if these are ready. You don't want to give them too much longer, you'll, you'll go from being, oh, that's 
still just a little bit more. I'll give him one more minute. I'm a generous guy with my time, right? And uh, you always want to wash your probe off in between because if it's dirty and goes in dirty, it's likely to come out dirty. And that won't tell you whether your baking is done or not. So I would say, depending on your oven, you should know your oven better than than I would. Um, 15 to probably 20 minutes maximum for these to cook. Uh, I'm trying to remember, it's been a little while since I've made these, but it seems to me last time it, it took me about 18 minutes to get them completely cooked. So we'll see if that does the job, and then we'll put them on our rack to cool. I shall move the rack over here so you can see them. Now I find uh, when you're making cookies or brownies or muffins or breads. Um, one way that helps to keep them a little bit moister and not to dry out is to allow them to cool slowly. So put them on a rack, but then I always I always cover them I always cover them with a towel. There we go. Turn them off and grab my pot holders. And there we are, some lovely, lovely brownies. We'll let those cool before I cut them into squares. If you cut them when they're too warm, they'll actually crumble. And uh, you don't want that. So, just uh, tilt that up for you again. You can see a nice, nice brownies. And uh, my wife will be a happy camper when she gets home. Tuesday is her afternoon for playing cards. She goes to... Um, a card group and they play canasta and bridge. She usually plays in the canasta group. I don't think she plays bridge to my knowledge. But uh, it gives me the opportunity to do my uh, baking videos and she doesn't have to worry about accidentally appearing on camera or saying something to me when she doesn't realize I'm filming. So she's a little camera shy. I think the only time she's actually been on camera in my videos it's been in a photo collage where she appeared that way. So um, I always chuckle, she's done acting, she's been in, if, if there's a series put out by Partners in Motion that aired in the States quite a few years back and you can still find reruns of it. It was Crime Stories by Partners in Motion and my wife is in several episodes of that and uh, so I, I don't know why she's camera shy to come on my YouTube channel but she is so we'll, we'll just have to give her that. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to want to see Glennis in action, uh, check out uh, Partners in Motion's Crime Stories. And I can't remember the episode she did the biggest role in, but it was a, a fellow who uh, was bumping off his wives, and she played his first wife that he shot between the eyes with a gun and set it up to look like a suicide. And uh, anyway, interesting episode. I believe the episodes are about a half hour or maybe 45 minutes long. Crime Stories by Partners in Motion. And uh, if you want to see me in action, I'll be in the series that's coming out in the States this fall. Uh, the title of the series is I Lived with a Murderer. And I will be in an episode about, uh, I can't remember his first name now, but a fellow whose last name is Beasley from Ohio, who was hiring people to work on his farm through Craigslist, I think it was, and then, and then killing them. And get the lovely, I have the lovely role of playing his landlord. So, I want to check that out this fall. I'll keep your eye open for I Lived With a Murderer. I don't remember the production company off the top of my head, but there you are. Anyway, I'm going to cover these up with a towel and let them cool. And when my wife gets home from cards, she'll be able to have a cup of coffee and a nice warm special brownie. Alright people, take care. God bless. I'll see you on Friday with the shout outs and groaner of the week. So practice your groans. I'd like to tell you it's a good one, but groaners never are. God bless. Take care. Stay safe.